All right, February 23rd, 2023. Today's day 51 for traditional <clears throat> and digital. Oh, guys, we're getting so close to completing uh, our tiger painting. It's been a long journey, longer than I thought it would be. And I'm learning just a ton about um, this digital realm of art. Honestly, I would suggest, you know, after experiencing this very uh, long-term project, and this is definitely a long-term project for me, that if you're new to digital art, that you do something like this yourself. Hey, good morning, Thinker. Um, it will teach you the perseverance that you need and I, I choose that word specifically because this is what we're working on right now is this tiger is supposed to, you know, facilitate the idea of perseverance or at least the remembrance of perseverance. It will teach you perseverance um, and give you a better understanding of really how long a, you know, a good painting takes for you. Um, it will also teach you that in a way, like for me, it's teaching me, okay, I need to start cutting out, <laughs> like figuring out how to become more efficient in this process as well. So lots, lots of learning, lots and lots and lots of learning on this today. I wonder, and you know, what would be the best uh, setup here for me to... I can't see the, the tiger, our reference. I guess I could just put it right over, but that's kind of annoying. You know, honestly, I don't need it that large. We're just gaining, uh, you know, an idea and understanding of the body, which we're gonna be working on. Well, I mean, we've been working on the body, but the back body, the side. Okay. There we go. So the one thing that I want to do here, uh, or want to at least understand and kind of put up, up front, is everything 
now is unimportant. Um, it's, its main purpose that the rest of the stuff we do, which is not much, is that it doesn't distract from our um, our center of interest, our focal point, which is the tiger's head. So even everything I did yesterday, which was the legs here in the front, um, you know, they're rough. They're very rough, and that's fine, as long as they don't pull from there. So, and this is our goal. We're going to work on the body here, and it's going to be as rough, but it may uh, we may fade it out a bit as well. We'll see. But we're just going to go for it. We're going to start with it right now. I'm starting by erasing some of what I see. Also, my brush is going to be smaller. I'm going to be using a smaller brush because we're going back in space. So the, you know, everything will get smaller. Not a bunch, but we want to make sure that we kind of keep with that idea. We're back in space and things are getting smaller. I did an outline of all of the, there's the tail, there's all the lines, all the tiger stripes. I mean, this doesn't have to be perfect, honestly, but I'm look, what I'm looking for is that concave shape that I see there. I'm actually working on a separate layer as well. I'm also changing up the difference in value between the stripes and what is not the stripes. I don't want this really stark difference in value. I want an indication that the value is different, that there are stripes here, but I want to bring it down a notch. Why? Because um, that drives attention. <clears throat> Sharp edges drive attention. So if I pick this black color, which is here, go a little bit closer to orange, lighten it up more, even more than that. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking for. And I'm going to bring down the value. Oh, Thinker says, I can't wait to see your oil painting process. Me too. <laughs> I have to figure that out. No, okay. <laughs> Actually, from doing those, um, if you don't know, I, on my Gumroad, I, I have some new tutorials out that I just published not too long ago. Um, one was on how to paint eyes in oil and I released last week or actually no this week on Tuesday I released um, painting the noses and I've recorded painting mouths and ears but I'm gonna wait to release those for a while the the recordings are gonna stay on you know on my computer until um, some higher priority items kind of go away. All right, get those finished. But the those paintings, you know, creating those tutorials really helped me gain an understanding to what my process is. Because when you, you know, you have a process, you have things that you do, but teaching it is a whole other thing it forces you to really think about well why are you doing this and how do i you know i need to explain why i'm doing this to others and through that you're kind of explaining to yourself as well you're like oh okay this is why i do this you're remembering all of these things that you chose to do and why and why they're in place for you i feel like i want a different brush 
I know this brush. This brush is too flat, I think. I feel like I really want the, like a small detailed brush right now. Gotta be careful with that because it may create too much texture. That could be okay if I go back through and smudge that texture. Let's see if that's too light. No, we're, we're there. Those values are good. If you notice, I'm not I'm not doing one of these things where I'm just making lines, right? It would be so easy to do that. But that's not, I mean, if we look at the reference here, that's not how the texture goes. This texture is, um, it's going this way and down, right? We're always describing the form, we're describing the texture, we're describing as we're painting all the time. It may take a little extra time to do something like this, but it pays dividends in the, in the future. You get all this luscious texture within your painting. But as you've seen before, is I don't do texture just for texture's sake. Um, you know, we had the body textured, but I, I removed a lot of that texture with some um, smudging because it was a bit distracting. And when I say, te I mean, texture is kind of all over the board, right? It could be uh, lots of things. We need to go a lot lighter here. I mean, the background has a texture. Its texture is um, kind of smoky and, you know, lots of soft edges everywhere. Okay, so now we're going into a more shadowy part. I'm still going to stick with the same value that I'm using for the tiger stripes. But what I'll do instead, and it's actually happening right here, is the non-stripe part of the tiger is getting darker. And so there's a, you know, this kind of blend going on. It's happening there. Just throwing in these stripes right now. The further I go down, the faster I'm getting as well. The less I'm caring about exactly the way it looks like, honestly. Oh, I'm gonna dip into some of this non-stripe color. It's looking a bit too uniform. <clears throat> Voice is breaking up today, sorry guys. So too much uniformity there, so let's get a little bit darker, bring it back.
You know, and honestly, a thinker, you had asked this before. If I've ever worked up a painting this much in digital, and I have not. This is uh, probably the longest I've worked on one single painting digitally. Usually, uh, in a lot of paintings, I work from a lot of uh, photos, and then I manipulate those photos. Don't do a lot of painting on them, or I haven't in, in the past. And then work them up like that. So, leaning heavily on the photography. See, I mean, th that's working really well. The texture there is kind of, uh, you can just see the difference between, you know, the top of this and the in the bottom here, how it just looks, you know, it's really cartoony. Just adding, going through and adding that texture in, focusing on the values, looking at your um, reference, determining, you know, small changes. I mean, here it just looks like a bunch of garbage, right? It doesn't look like a lot. Um, I think we're a, little, we're a bit off. No, actually we're not. I feel like when I look at the image, there's so much more going on in there, but I guess not. What I will do is darken up. See, here's a, here's a cool opportunity, which I'll throw in. Like maybe there's a stripe right next to the edge of the, the front leg. Just further kind of amplifies that that's um, in front of. Now for these down here, I'm going to go into a kind of bluish green color. Still going to be dark, maybe darker than that. Paint outside the lines. Always paint outside the lines. What I like is that down here, it's gonna be a lot darker, but it's it needs to change hue. At least darker than the reference. Actually, I'm going to remove all hue from this if I can. Just complete gray. We're also going to see that, isn't that amazing right here? I'm losing that edge completely. I'm even going to pick some of the background and bring the background into that. We don't need it. We don't need that edge at all. And that's absolutely wonderful. If you remember, uh, during the composition section, there's, oh, it is a little bit different there still. Interesting. Let's, let's get rid of it completely. So I'm gonna pick just the background color and paint this leg in that exact background color, leaving the stripes all the way up.
another reason to constantly zoom in and out. It's really important. Um, we don't need that edge at all because it's... <laughs> you're all about texture. I'm all about teal. Yes. <laughs> we don't need that because there's an applied line there. Implied line. Um, the Where the stripes end is going to be implying the end of that leg. So we got this color. Let's add in a bit warmer color. But keep it the same value as well. We're going to break it up to... Still just kind of defining the stripes. Uh, these edges are, are still really sharp and they're, they're gonna stay sharp for right now. I, I'll eventually probably go in with my smudge brush and smudge them. All these edges in here. Make sure we still have that implied line. Yeah, definitely. All the way out here, you can see there's an implied line right there. Can totally see that that, okay, it ends there. Even though these colors are completely blurred together. <laughs> I love that. It's fantastic. I also like how this stripe is kind of split. I didn't really grab that, but now I'm going to get it. Some interests, some variation that happens. It's really nice. I'm going to take this side and get rid of it as well. Okay. So this dark color... We're going to remove all saturation from it. It's going to be a gray, and I'm going to lighten it up slowly. Because this is the gray part, the white part of the tiger back here. I need to be careful with values here. I need to paint outside the line. So I'm going to go into those stripes as well. Get a little bit lighter. A tad bit lighter. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I just need to repeat it. But make sure that I have, because there's kind of a break in it right there. I mean, if we if we look closely at the reference, there is, you know, super shadow over here, and then, um, you know, a quick turn of the form. You could see that by how the value changes. So if I did that, it needs to be gray, maybe this gray. bring more of that lighter gray right here. So that's where the curve is. And then all up in here is going to be very dark. A very dark gray. And that stripe is just going to get lost in it. 
both of these stripes. I mean, you can see it on the reference, they just kind of fade into nothing. All right, that's good. It's just subtle enough, I think, to indicate these differences in um, hue. Let's get pretty dark here, but I'm going to lighten up most of this. I like how in, in that turn of the form in our reference, there's all kinds. It looks really hairy down there. Like, that Siberian tiger has a very hairy belly. Let's go rub the Siberian tiger's belly. Yeah, get your face ripped off. <laughs> you wouldn't believe... Because I hear a lot of stories about people at zoos because my wife being a zookeeper for years, really interesting stories, but especially about, uh, you know, people's, not the majority, but some people's understanding of, uh, you know, these huge animals in zoos and their kind of lack of respect for how how much these animals could kill you in just a few seconds. <laughs> and, and I think many people think, oh, I go into a zoo, I'm completely protected, hey, why, we, why don't we go pet those tigers? Why can't we pet that polar bear? You know? <laughs> like, it's just, they think, you know, there's some kind of, oh, well, these tigers are pets. They... Are these polar bears or pets? It's kind of funny. It's like, no. Even the zookeepers that work with them every single day are using protected contact, which means there's never, there's always some kind of preventative barrier between them and the animal. Do you think uh, changing value, saturation, and hue is easier, uh, more precise, and digital? Ooh. Hmm. Let me let me give some thought to that. My initial knee-jerk reaction is yes, it's easier. Because I have a freaking color palette right here, right? Like I can pick a hue and then I can desaturate it. I mean obviously it's gonna be easier because I don't have to like mix paint. Uh, in that aspect, but is it, yes, it's easier. And here's why it's easier. Uh, I'll tell you exactly why it's easier. <clears throat> because, excuse me, because this color that I have on my brush, well, it's not, it's a gray, but let's say I have this color on my brush, right? I have plotted a point on a color wheel and I'll, and, and within the oil painting process, I'll show you the color wheel that I use. It's one that I made myself. I did a video on it. If you've seen it, uh, probably one of the most important arsenals in my bag, right? Or tools in my bag, <laughs> tools in my arsenal. Yeah. Um, but this is plotted exactly where it is. It's given me a reference point. 
But in oil painting, you mix up a color. You got kind of a general idea of where it's going to show up on the color wheel, you know. It's probably this big. But then there's some estimation and guessing involved in that. You know, does it need to be cooler? Does it need to be warmer? More saturated? Less saturated? So you kind of, there's a lot of kind of guesswork. Um, digital really pulls a lot of that guesswork out of it. Yeah. So resounding, yes. Dealing with color, easier in digital. Does, does that mean you should drop your oil paintings and go digital, full, you know, full tilt kind of thing? No, not at all. Uh, there are, you know, massive advantages to traditional that digital will maybe will never reach. We don't know yet. Um, And we'll, we'll take on those when they come. Or until someone asks. Because I can't think of, like, right out of the box, which is the most... Uh, which of these, you know, what are the aspects of traditional that far surpass what digital could ever achieve? I guess I could come up with some, if, you know, at least give us some thought. All right. That didn't take long at all. That's there. That is there. Oof. We're a half an hour in. I'm going to stand up real quick, guys. Back is not feeling good. Okay, next step, we're going to take our smudge brush uh, by David Ravoy. This is not one we created. And I'm going to make it a lot smaller. Top to bottom again, and I'm going to start, well, let me see. Let me back out. Yeah, I can smudge a lot of this down. There's going to be a lot of, you know, in and out on this one, so zooming in and out, because what I'm looking at are the lines and textures, and I need to merge this, so control E, are the, the lines that stick out the most that are on this, this back side. The edges that are the sharpest when I zoom out. You know, I see right here. We want some sharp edges. Right here. So I'm strategically, you know, changing edges here. That's looking really good. It didn't take much to do this today. Either I'm getting better or I'm just looking, I'm, I'm getting more efficient at what I choose to call done, right? Changing my definition of done, basically. And I think that's where why this is going a lot faster. It's so easy for us to get into just crazy amounts of detail. You know, we were painting one single tree in the utmost of detail, which no one would see when we have a whole por forest to think about, you know?
and I'm really hitting this edge hard, smudging the heck out of it. Let's push it way back. It's going to be interesting, I think, on the oil painting, um, when I go through and paint a lot of these things, um, I'm going to be trying to, to really repeat what I'm, I've done here. I've solved a lot of problems within this painting, and I, I want to use this as a guide. The guide, I mean, it's telling me where, where to go, really. Holy crap, that's looking really good. Loving that. Save. Okay. We're going to take a look at the body at this zoom level real quick. Let's tab, actually before we do that, view, reference, tab into it, and really just kind of look. Okay, the one thing that I see that is problematic is uh, too much separation between front and back. Uh, they've turned into two separate entities. I went too far on that. And I know where it's at. It's right here. This is, this is where it's happening. Because I remember, you know, I've talked about it several times, is we have this line that kind of goes up and blends in, and this line that comes down and blends in, but we don't have a blend there. I'm going to go back to my hairbrush. I'm going to take some of the color on the front of the tiger, and we're going to, yeah. We're going to focus on just bringing that into the side of the tiger. Leaving one of those stripes there, sort of. Actually, let me add a, a stripe. I like this one that it's very subtle. It's kind of like the connector stripe for the front and the side. It's just this little subtle thing.
Okay, yeah, that did it. Okay. Yeah, I don't see anything. It's time to move to the tail. Where is our tail? Is this the tail? Yes, this is the tail. And let's move our image out and change the opacity. It's a very white tail. White and black. It's like a lemur tail. If you don't know what a lemur is, a lemur is a cat with thumbs. <laughs> a very long tail. <laughs> Basically. All right. Um, there is definitely orange up there, but I think that's part of the tiger butt. Here's what we're going to do on this. I'm going to have some fun with this, okay? Make sure that I'm on the right layer, which I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to take this background color, okay, and I'm going to paint it into this kind of the non-stripe portion. We're going to have fun with implied lines. I'm constantly amazed sometimes, uh, and, and this is another reason why it's so important to really look at other art, is you start understanding of what is not needed. You know, the simplicity of everything. And pushing those boundaries of is this even necessary? The only thing that I see that's necessary on this is the turn of the form, which we don't have. And that's going to be fully described within those uh, center areas. So we take our background color and we just darken it up a bit. Let's go all the way down the tail with a darker part of this. I'm probably, I'm, I, you know, I'm just going to kind of flub this area in. It's not going to be seen behind that palm frond. We can light it up just a tad. I'm going to take some of this darker orange and place it in here in some spots. Because I, I want some color on this tail. I don't want it to be just black and white. It's my painting. I can change how tigers look. It's a bit too much, but that's okay.
kind of the process I'm developing here as I'm working on this is, you know, I'll, I have this merged layer below and I'm creating a layer above it, working it up to see if it looks good. And then when I get to a point where I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's good, I like that. Uh, then I can merge them down and then continue further from there. I don't even need this reference uh, for that tail. It doesn't really matter right now. I, I like the addition of the tail. I think it looks really good. Okay, let's merge it. And then smudge it. Mudge and sm merge and smudge. Is that too soft? I don't think so. One thing I did, like I have this uh, drawing, it's a Tyrannosaurus Rex drawing. It's kind of a, a Jurassic Park idea. And the, the tail and one of the legs of that Tyrannosaurus Rex, I smudged out. I even had like multiple kind of after images of the tail in motion. And it was supposed to display motion, and I think it looked really good. It'd be kind of interesting to do that with this tiger, but it does attract attention, and I don't want that. What I'm going to do is bring this down into a more fluid kind of arc. That's really all that that needs. It doesn't need more than that. Actually, yeah, after doing that, what I'm seeing here is this sharp edge on the butt needs that same treatment. We're thinking about focal length within cameras. So if you set a certain aperture on your camera, like a very low aperture, your focal length will be very small and maybe you can only get the tiger nose in um, focus. And then everything else will be blurry, but then you make up, you have a lo larger aperture and yeah is that right yeah yeah because a 1.8 will have a very small focal length it's a very fast lens then if you go up all the way to 16 like everything will be in focus so what we're doing is we're decreasing that focal length so i could even go up here and blur out this edge a bit more And we, <clears throat> we can create a sense of distance. Might I suggest a little higher value on the tail as it turns up at the end, another pointer to the focal point, teal, <laughs> teal. Yeah, I can try it. 
I don't think, you know, if I go higher value on here, it's not going to be much higher at all, honestly. Like, that is the limit to it. You're going to attract a lot of attention with this. Because it's going to be a lighter value right next to a very dark value, you know? So you have to be very subtle. It, r it reminds me of... You know, I do a lot of uh, web development uh, for my job. It's, it's more complicated than that, but I'll just say web development. But... Yeah, that's as far as I'll go. Uh, you get all kinds of companies that you deal with, and they're like, well, uh, my logo needs to be bigger. And then the question I have is, are you selling logos? Right? Uh, but no, I want to see my logo. It's like, no one cares about your logo. You know, Amazon could be called, um, you know, Tiger Express. No one cares about the name Amazon. They just care that they get their stuff cheap and fast. No one cares about this tiger tail. We don't care about the tiger tail. Push it back, keep it back there. And honestly, we don't care about this palm frond, which is too sharp in my opinion. Um, I'd like to push that back a bit more. If I did that, I'll, I'll do that on the painting. Not going to do it here right now. But yeah, that's, that's, that's all that I'll do for the tail. It's one of those things where, and, and you said it before, Thinker, where you provide interest. You have your focal point. And then you give other interest throughout the painting. So that the others, the other individual, you know, people will kind of explore all the other details. But you got to give them what they want first, right? A focus. You, people crave um, clarity. They crave purpose. They, they, they want you to point them to a point, uh, something. You know, someone asks a question, they don't want a diatribe of tons of information. They want you to get to the point, the TLDR, right away. Um, they want to be led around and given specific instructions of this is what you need to look at. And then after that, you dazzle them with all the extra details because you've already, you've captured their interest, right? Yeah, our, our tiger is looking very good. This is ours, man. I'm trying to think about the um, the painting setup that I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do, and how I can keep the computer close so that I could respond back and forth to comments. It's gonna be a bit difficult. Hmm. And, and probably the most important thing, because I don't have to type. I can respond to you. I just need to see the comments. Um, what would be difficult is when, when I get spam every now and then. You know, someone, it's usually, well, anyway, I, I, I get spam every now and then and having to deal with that. I'm going to put, Thinker, I'm going to put you to work, make you a moderator. <laughs> you got to show up clock in for your job okay the last thing I want to do is this palm frond why because well let, let's look at the, the entirety of it it attracts a bit of attention we've darkened it up once you see what that's where it was before then I darkened it up and that's so much better that is so much better Actually, um, when I do things like this, I'm not looking at, uh, and I shouldn't really, and I'm not looking at um, my, oh, geez, canvas. 
And I'm looking up here at the overview. <laughs> and the, the overview is actually very slow in updating. That's really interesting. Actually, what's faster in updating, if I look at OBS, which has this really tiny icon. I mean, the other way you can do it is just, you know, zoom way the heck out. Look at that. It's like, okay, we're looking at the tiger head. Now it's like the tiger head is competing against this palm frond in the, at the bottom. So I think it's at a good value level. The problem with it is, is it's completely lifeless. So we're going to, we're going to introduce some life into it. And I only have a few more minutes left, but Let's see, let's see, I'm gonna try something. That should be more than enough. I'm gonna create a layer right here. Oh, but I have this kind of background going on. Oh, that's the image, so that's not gonna work. Hmm. Well, I could do it this way. Just do a selection, control H, insert a new layer, and everything that I paint will be within that selection, you see. Uh, make things a little bit easier on me. And the life is gonna be with a little bit of tiger orange in some places. It's gonna be maybe some grays. And let's change to a different brush. Actually, I want to go back to my favorites. Is it this guy here? A little bit smaller. Hmm. No, it's not what I want. Yeah, let's use this one. Magenta. Oop, we have to make sure that we got the right value first, and then magenta. I think I know what you're going to say. You're going to want teal or something. Darn teal color. Jeez. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> A little bit of life. Need to stick within the same value ranges, but not the same saturation. We can break away from the saturation. So yeah, I don't want to change that though. And I'm just throwing this everywhere. I mean, we were looking at palm fronds and we saw that a lot of them at the ends was where a lot of the brown was happening, where they were kind of dying at the end. We can get darker here. Looking a bit rough. I think I am going to start changing some of the value. That's right, we were using our pencil brush for this.
color selection is pretty terrible right now on this. Having some issues with that. It keeps selecting a very dark color. Look, like, look, that value is way off. I selected right here. Huh. I'm gonna bring this up. That's what it was. It was that above layer that was causing issues. It had alpha transparency on it as well. All right, let's uh, smudge a lot of this. I like those colors, but they're a bit too much. So I'm gonna smudge them out. Kind of blend them in a bit. Yeah, we're not gonna get, the one thing we won't do is get into these crazy colors down here. You know, I just picked from that palm frond. Even like kind of the darker areas of those palm fronds is too, too crazy down there. Or it's not too bad with any darker areas, honestly. Let me do one, a couple more things before we close out the stream because I wanna respect your time as well as mine. Just gonna throw some colors from the other palm fronds down there that I like. To kind of prepare for tomorrow's session because, oh geez, um, now that I'm thinking about it, after this palm frond, what's left to do, right? Holy crap. All right, so. Yeah, I just needed to get that palm frond figured out down there. And, you know, I'll probably change up, change up some sharpness with it. Especially down there with all of the, the little points that are kind of coming out, changing all those up. So I'll, I'll probably soften it out some bit, a bit, get some more color into it. And then this painting is going to be done. At that point, we're done. And that's definitely going to be tomorrow. So tomorrow is Friday. Um, oh man, I'm, I'm driving all day Saturday. Yeah, that's actually going to work out well because tomorrow we'll have a shorter live stream to finish this up. Saturday, we won't have a live stream and maybe Sunday as well because I need to get the studio set up for oil painting live stream, which is going to take some time uh, and I need that time. Let me tab into the big, beautiful view of this actually going to take a screenshot for the next thumbnail and we're good um i'll be here tomorrow it's actually going to be a half an hour earlier so the tomorrow's live stream is going to be at 4 a.m my time 7 a.m your time thinker and yeah i'll see you there it's going to be a shorter live stream and then we'll be off on the weekend no live streams on the weekend. And then Monday, I'm gonna come back at you with live in the studio with an oil painting. I'm excited and scared at the same time. <laughs> I can't wait. 
Okay. That's it for today. Thanks for joining, guys. Don't forget the resources are on my Gumroad. See the link in the description. Uh, CB50 off for 50% off the traditional and digital 51 days of resources for this. And um, I'll figure out how I can continue with that within the oil painting. It may stop at that point. I'm not sure. We'll see. Anyway, I'm talking too much. So see you guys tomorrow.